everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. This morning I was having a think about what video I wanted to share this week and I am experimenting with a few different types of videos and today what I wanted to do was take you through my process for creating watercolour swatches. Now these aren't colour swatches, these are texture swatches and I actually shared a reel about this this morning on my Instagram and I had a lot of questions coming through and suggestions and I thought that it would be fun to go into that process in more depth and bring you along. So I'm going to go through those techniques plus a few more that I've thought of and use this as an opportunity to experiment and come up with some more swatches for my collection. So first of all I am using watercolour paper for this. The brand that I'm using is the Canson Heritage cold press 300 GSM and this is a watercolour paper that I use quite often in my work and I do like to use a paper that I use in my paintings for my swatches so I know that how the paint handles. So I'm going to cut this down to size. I have a paper cutter that I'll be using and I'm making swatches that are 15 centimetres across and I think they're seven centimetres this way. So i worked out how to cut down my paper so that I can get a lot of swatches out of one A3 sheet. So let's do that first. So I pre-measured these to save the mathematics of me trying to work it out because every time I do this I forget how to do it and how to get them correct so that I don't waste any paper. <laughs> so uh, here we go. So a few people have asked me about where I got my paper cutter from. So this came from Officeworks, which is a very popular stationery store in Australia, but I'm sure you can get them at any of those big sort of stationery craft places. This uh, is J Burrows, that's the brand. It's very handy to have. I use this all the time for cutting up watercolour paper to size. So I've just laid out my colours and I have indigo, main blue genuine, uh, quinacridone deep gold, duochrome autumn mystery and gothite. So I have the main colours there and I'll just add some water and mix them up now. So as well as watercolours I also have an acrylic ink here as well because for some of the techniques that I tried out I actually found that it worked better with the acrylic ink so I might use that from time to time just to experiment. So I'm going to start off by getting this fibre paste down because it does need some drying time. So this is a medium that is usually used with acrylic paint to create textures but it works really well with watercolour as well. So I'll pop this down, it's really easy to use, you can get it in most art supply shops. This is the golden brand and it looks really, uh, what would you call it, it's like a mousse inside. So it applies really easily as well. So it's a little bit different to moulding paste. Um, it's more of a textural uh, effect. So I'm going to try and remember to leave room to write at the top because the idea that I have with these is for them to be swatches so that I can document the different textures. But I always forget that and end up covering up the whole sheet. So you can see there the texture's gone on. It's a little bit like tissue paper, it looks like it once you put it on. Make sure we've got plenty of it on there and leave it to dry. So we'll come back to that one. I just thought I'd get that one going first. So I'm going to do a bit of a comparison for the first one here because I want to try this one with ink as well. So this is using cling wrap and I tried this out in my latest class, Simplicity in Nature. I used it and it had a great effect with the acrylic ink. So I've been trying it out with watercolour and I just want to give it a go with the watercolour again to see if I can get as interesting a texture as I was able to with the acrylic ink. So all we need to do is get that colour down. So we'll do, we'll do the watercolour first. I'm going to try a, a different colour combo to what I did the other day because the different paints do react differently. So this is the quinacridone deep gold and oops, indigo in there. It's kind of a khaki green colour. So then you grab your cling wrap. You just need a little bit of that. Scrunch it up. So it gets nice texture to it and then lay it down on your swatch. Okay. 
Yeah. Okay, so there's the watercolour version. That one's actually looking good. It looks like it's lifting up quite a bit of paint there, so it'll be interesting to see how it turns out when I take it off. But just so that we have a bit of a comparison, I will use a little bit of this acrylic ink and do an ink version as well. So I've just still got a little bit of colour there from my brush and the water, but I'm going to drop a, a bit of this burnt umber in and then just mix it around. I actually love this colour, this um, burnt umber. This is the Amsterdam brand, but it's just such a nice, rich, chocolatey brown. Okay, so we'll do the same thing. We shall see how they turn out. So we'll pop them aside. So the next one I'm going to do is a crowd favourite. I'm going to use some sea salt. And I'm going to do a combination of this duochrome mystery with a little bit of the buff titanium. And probably just a bit of Gothite, I think. So let's just get some of those colours down first. So I've got some sea salt here. Different kinds of salts will create different textures, but they all work. So whatever you have to hand, Norm normal table salt's fine. So I've just ground some and I'll just be sprinkling it on. This is also a really nice uh, granulating colour because I'm using uh, Gothite, which is already a granulating watercolour. So granulating means it does have those textures in the paint, so it doesn't dry really smooth. It dries with a bit of a textural effect, and the salt is going to make it even more textural. So for this one, I want to use a sea sponge. This has a really nice texture to the sponge itself, which creates really great marks on the page. So this is an easy way of getting sort of some textural marks into your work. So I'm going to use a few different colours just to make really pretty effects. So that's with a sea sponge. Okay, another one that I probably should have done earlier because it needs a bit of drying time is masking fluid. So masking fluid is not so much a textural effect but just an interesting effect and it's a fun one to use from time to time. So this brand is the Art Spectrum Masking Fluid. Daniel Smith also has a masking fluid that you could try. This is an Australian brand that I like to use. So I'll just shake it up a bit and apply the fluid to the paper. So that will mask the watercolour paper so that the paper stays white and then when we add watercolour over the top it will, uh, it will create a really nice pattern. So you can do whatever kind of pattern that you want to do. Um, I've been in a bit of a tree mood lately so I need to do branchy type shapes I think. Trying to remember to leave room at the top. Okay, so you need to leave that to dry as well. So I'll just put it aside. I can't remember how long. I think I usually leave it for about 10, 10 or so minutes, um, just till it feels dry and then apply the paint. So pop that aside. So I'm just mixing the Duochrome Autumn Mystery into the Mayan Blue to get a nice sort of gray color, which will have a hint of shimmer in it as well. Might even add a touch of this as well. There we go, three-way mix. So in the past, I have used bubble wrap by painting on the bubble wrap, particularly with acrylic paint, pressing it down onto a piece of paper or a canvas. But for this technique, I am going to paint the swatch and then apply the bubble wrap and let it dry. So this creates a really, really fun uh, imprint. We'll get the colour down first. So we've got a few different colours on this particular swatch. And then we'll apply the bubble wrap, press it down. Once again, you can already see that it's lifting paint in areas, sucking it up. So put that aside and see how that one turns out in a minute. So let's try out the aluminium foil. And once again, I'm going to do a little comparison between the ink and the uh, watercolour. Okay. 
Okay, so we'll do the foil now. So with this one, I'm going to place a mug onto it to try and push the aluminium down a bit more firmly and see what that does. So the fibre paste one is now dry. I'm going to come back over the top of that with some watercolour paint. You can really see how textural the surface is from the uh, fibre paste. Very cool. Can't wait to see that once it's dry. Okay, let's pop that aside. So let's come back to the masking fluid. So I'm just using straight indigo on this particular one. Okay. So we'll leave that to dry. I feel like I've said that a million times now. But all of them will need to dry completely before you pull up the cling wrap or the foil or the bubble wrap or anything like that in order to get that textural effect. So I'm going to take a break now, have a cup of tea, just let everything completely dry and then we'll come back and see which ones worked best. So I was just outside having a cup of tea and then I realised it's nearly school pick up time and I want to get this video finished so I've come back in and now I want to have a look at what we've got but there's one more technique I wanted to show you which I forgot about before which is using a straw so you can blow your paint and get interesting effects so because I do have the straw here I thought I may as well get that done quickly and it doesn't take much time and then we'll do the big reveal. Dotting a bit of colour around. And I have my straw here. I think I might add a bit more paint in another colour. Just drop even a bit more in. There we go. <laughs> Need a little bit of room still to write, but I wanted to, got distracted, but I wanted to just get quite a few different lines coming out from the straw. You need quite a bit of paint, so you do need to get a bit of a puddle in order for it to work well. Okay, I think I'll leave it there so I've got room to write. Okay, so let's go back and start revealing. I'm trying to remember which one I did first. The glide wrap, cling wrap. Okay, so this is the watercolor one. So it's got some really nice textures there. And this was the ink one. Well, it's interesting because the uh, watercolor one actually worked better than the ink one in this particular example. I think it's a lot to do with how much you scratch up the cling wrap, how much pressure you put down. Each time you will get a slightly different effect. Um, both of them certainly have texture on them. So I'm just going to label them up now. So cling, this one is cling wrap. And then we have our sea sponge. And then we've got our salt, sea salt. So this should be ready to come off now. I think it's still a little bit wet. Still a few little wet bits, but I'll just take off what I can and see the textures there. And I do have this other one here, which is dry. So you can actually see this one is very similar. Um, just a little bit of a di color divide on this one. Okay, I'll take the rest of that salt off later once it's fully dry. Okay. 
So with the salt, you can just uh, lift it with your finger, just like I was doing, but it is best to wait a bit longer than I did. I'm on a bit of a time crunch here, but if you wait until it's fully dry, you're gonna get those really, really nice textures. So we have the bubble wrap. So you can see the beautiful print that it makes. Let's see if I can write on this without smudging it because this one is also a little bit wet still. Oh my goodness, that is so yummy. I really loved it when I did it this time as well. But you can see how it really emphasises the different colours. So this one was a mixture of quite a few colours that I put down. And you can just see like hints of peach and green and this one you can see hints of grey and peach and yeah, yummy, really yummy. Okay, moving on, let's bring over our aluminium foil. Have a look at how this one turned out. Okay. Okay, so we've got little imprints there. Let's have a look at it on the ink, not a huge amount. So I'm not having huge texture with the foil. The cling wrap does work a bit better, uh, but it's worth a shot, always worth trying them out. This one is actually pretty good. This one's not much going on. So we've got our fiber paste, so that's dry. So you can see the texture in that one. Finally, I have the masking fluid. Okay, so this is all dry now and I'm going to see if I can pull a bit of it up with my fingers first because I don't want to smudge the watercolor paint into the white space. So let's see if I can find an edge. So I've found a bit that I could pull up with my fingers and often I don't need to use the eraser on the end of the brush because if I can just pull it up like this, then it's, it's not going to uh, require that rubbing and the rubbing can agitate the watercolour paint. So this enables it to stay, the white part to stay nice and crisp. It's also very satisfying too. And if you're lucky, you can kind of pull it all up in one go. So this one isn't really a textural technique, but it is a fun one to have in your toolkit. So just for these last bits, I will use the rubber tip just to see if I can push them off. There we are. So I'll just bring them all in now so we can have a look at what we've got all the different effects. This is now nice and dry, so a little bit more of that salt off. Okay. So I'm, I've got these two as well. These were both the acrylic ink ones. I'll pop them in as well into the mix. Okay, so you can see all the different effects that were created using these tools and materials. I hope that there's something in there that has inspired you. Let me know in the comments which is your favourite technique and whether you've used any of these before. So I hope you've enjoyed the video and you'll tune in again next time.